Hi everyone, it's Tony. Buckle up for part one of the 60 Days In Reunion Recap and be sure to subscribe to the a and &E YouTube channel. Thank you. Enjoy. So this reunion is being taped before the premiere of season six. And so none of you have seen any of the episodes no. No. so far. I'd like to welcome Sheriff Jonathan Horton and Chief Keith Peak from the Etowah County Detention Center. Gentlemen, good to have you here. Good to be here. And good to have all of our participants. Alex, Shanice, Tony, Ashley, Dennis, and Jennifer. Here are some highlights from your time in the Etowah County Detention Center. I'll see you on the other side. I'm giving up all control. Checking was very slack. I totally could have stuck something up my butt if I wanted to. Got to go in and had this look like, don't with me. It's been pure from the moment I walked in through the door. Etowah County Jail is a party. Clone, heroin, ice. It is not safe. If I don't get your knife, you kill me, I kill you, bro. I never really seen a guy get, like, stabbed that close to me. If Alex was in any type of danger, I would look out for him. I'd rather get beat up than have Dennis be my savior. Last night in my dream, a demon had sex with me. <laughs> that place is insane. This is the worst thing I've ever experienced in my life. Bye-bye. Mm. That guy. <laughs> that was so exciting. It was. <laughs> Brought back some good memories? No. <laughs> I anticipated that I was going to have issues with the inmates, not the correctional officers. I told my father, I was like, yeah, I miss them. He's like, you don't miss no inmates. They're, they're criminals. And I'm like, no, they're real people. Dennis, let's talk about your story. I think I had a perception about people in jail, and I only had that perception from the outside looking in. So I wanted to see what it'd be like, see if it changed my perception from being on the inside. So was this former college quarterback too confident for his own good. Let's take a look at Dennis's journey. You're a little cocky. You're kind of pretty. You're going to go into a place with a bunch of rednecks. That attitude right there, they're going to eat you alive. Chief Pete, that's not a tough person. That's a weak person. That's a soft person. That's the person I beat up. Yeah, I appreciate it. So people do look up to me. They consider me a pod boss. Dennis claims that he has reached pod boss status. Do you see that? Nah, not at all, no. <laughs> What the heck? Pierce know what he do for a living. I guarantee he probably sit behind somebody's desk somewhere, work from home or something, sell insurance or something. You think you were too cocky? <laughs> no, that's just me, you know? And I won't change myself for nobody. He was not a pod boss. No. You want to tell Tony what you actually do for a living? Sell insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I did get into that a little bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> so there was one moment in Dennis's time in jail that nearly got him kicked out of the program. Let's watch. Mm -hmm. Why do you just want to go to six? My roommate was telling me about Unit 6, which is SAP. It's a drug program. A lot of people want to get there because it's freedom down there. Why did you move to a different pod? Let's make something real clear. We're expecting you to help us out. This ain't some schoolyard, some college, or some football field. This is real life. So quit doing all this stupid that you're doing. Don't raise your voice up. Oh! You're in my building. Don't turn around anything on me, because I promise you, I will walk you out the door right now. Go in there, do what you're supposed to do, and do your job. Simple as that. <laughs> Hang in there. Now, you don't have to grip your hand hard, trust me. You grip mine. <laughs> no, sir. Look, we can cut the camera off and we can have a real talk. But at the end of the day, I do this for a living. Don't try me. So? You know, from the jump, I think Pete just had an issue with me. After that talk right there, Dennis did a 180 degree turnaround, and he started doing what he was chose to go in there to do. But he didn't have the right to talk to me how you talk to me. Screaming and stuff like that, no. Do you think he was screaming at you? Yeah, at one point, he raised his, his tone at me. I think I got my point across. All right, Ashley, you were a 60 Days In super fan. Yes. Why did you want to be a participant on the show? This was my um, opportunity to become a better detective, to find out how I can use my position as an officer to 
kind of, you know, make my community a safer and better place. It seems like this impacted you more than you expected. Let's take a look. Oh no, I don't want to. Now, put me up, put you. Wow. What is he doing? Miss Williams decided that she would not allow us to sleep. I was hoping for clean clothes. So I stripped down to put my clothes outside. And I'm like, are you going to bring me extra clothes? I said she was going to. I really have, I really have nothing. I'll be naked all night. You'll be OK. Miss Williams, please. You said you would come back. <laughs> I have never seen a cop or a corrections officer violate somebody like we were violated. I've been a police officer for six years, and I have never witnessed official oppression. And now I don't know how I'm going to be able to move forward and do my job. Ashley, how does it feel to, to relive that? I knew it was going to be tough watching all that again. Um, because I really, I cared so much. Tell us about the moment you were left naked in your cell. Um, so that is, I'm about to be 30 years old. Single-handedly most humiliating moment in my life. Alex, let's move on to your story. You went from living with your parents to living in jail. <laughs> right. Big change. A little bit, yeah. So did Alex prove his independence from his parents? <laughs> Let's take a look. Cutting a line pisses me off. It's such a blatant sign of disrespect. That's why you're in jail, because you didn't learn basic respect <laughs> like that on the streets. And then there's Dennis. Bless your heart. Oh, oh honey. They're ruining me. Your, your parents was right. He's definitely disrespecting me when he, when he does that. 49, 49. Once an a-hole, always an a-hole. Yeah, I didn't like watching that. <laughs> Tony, what did you remember about Alex? Honestly, my personal opinion to you, listen to your parents. So you think that Alex made a mistake by getting into the program? Right, with all of us sitting up here saying safety first, that was a mistake for him coming. But when was my safety ever in jeopardy? I don't, I don't think people are saying that directly, but however, I know if I can go in there and do what I did, I know for a fact there's people just as big and bad as I am who can take advantage of you extremely easy. When I came in, it was like, Yo, don't really, we stick together, right? But we're going to go and attack the little white boys. You right. get what I'm saying? That's what he's trying to say. And this is like, not being in, in danger. Happened. Like, no, it never happened. I'm like, trying to get pissed. Yeah, you're right. Nothing happened to you, but you didn't really go try to buy any dope. You smoked some clone, but you didn't try to go buy any, because you probably would have got your ass whipped. That's just the uh, truth. There are two participants who started in training but are missing from this panel. Let's bring them out. Matt and Jacob, come on out. Gentlemen, welcome. Historically, Marines have done extremely well on 60 Days In, but unfortunately, Matt became the exception to the rule. Let's watch. You watch the show, and it looks completely different than when you're in here. You're constantly doing this when people walk behind you. I cannot breathe in there. It's like, it's, it's literally an animal cage in there. People are gonna watch this, and they're gonna see how weak I am. I think I, I underestimated the show. I don't think it's safe. I don't. If you put all the mental aside, I don't think it's safe. There's weapons, there's drugs. There's lack of, of respect in every aspect inside of there. They don't give it. It's just, it's just not safe. She went out. I'm gonna regret it, but yeah. Damn, I've never broken down like that in my life. So yeah, that sucked, man. It's a rough place, man. It's a really shitty jail. No offense, but that's what it is. Matt, with the time now that you've had, if you could do this again, would you do it? Nah. So you wish you'd just stayed a fan? Oh, yeah. Jacob, let's move on to you as a, uh, as a corrections officer. I've never failed at anything in my life and uh, until this. So Jacob was uh, another participant who made 60 days in history, not for necessarily the right reasons. Let's watch. For me to tap out, it's going to take a shank to 
to the body. Was that the thing? I'm ready to go. I'm just, I'm done. I, I can't, I, I'm done. I'm sorry. That's the only one to do. Ten. That's a ten. I'm done. Jacob, what's, what's it like to, to watch that now? I'm still very, very ashamed of myself. Tony, you couldn't believe it. You said, wait a sec, he just gave the signal thinking that it wasn't really that. Right, right. You tapped out an intake, you already knew you, that wasn't for you. You didn't even make it into the pod, so mentally, you going in, you was already defeated, I feel. And that, that could have been a spot or opportunity for someone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, so, you're right. so the whole tapping out thing, I, I'll, I'll never down anyone for tapping out. However, you know, in your specific case, you tapped out an intake. Come on, bro. I never seen any of this, any of this comments um, from Matt or Jacob. I thought Alex would be the first one to do so, but Alex stood strong. Um, I was pretty much the pod boss by the time I left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>